This is the final part of my Blender Challenge 7 submission, Modeling a Science Lab. And I thought I would uh, show you some of the renders uh, for any of you who have followed through this long series of uh, modeling and getting to this point. Um, I realized that there are a couple of things, for example, this gear uh, stuck in the back. I didn't actually end up uh, putting any uh, any textures on it but uh, this is uh, this is a big project for me um, seeing as I can only do this on my graveyard shift when I am up and uh, sort of waiting on my kids in case there's any issues uh, I do like to work uh, on this shift which is about uh, 12 p.m. to 6 a.m. or so uh, just gotten so used to it over the years and uh, I'm kind of a night owl, I guess. Um, yeah, so let me point out a few things. Uh, while I'm calling this done, there's certainly things that could be improved, and that's what I thought I would I would talk a little bit about. Um, I didn't think that I would um, have this stool in much of uh, the render, that it would be very visible, but in this view it is, and so it's uh, looking a little stark, but... Uh, Hopefully there's enough other stuff to look at that we don't focus on that. Some of my scale and proportions are, are off. And this is the problem when you just start modeling and you don't really do stuff to scale. Um, but um, hopefully it's not too, too bad. Um, I didn't end up changing the glass. And so the glass here and the glass there and the glass there looks a little scratched which I wanted it to look looks a little bit like cobwebs somebody said and that's that's great it's a little too regular for my liking but uh, but at this point like I say I think I'm, I'm calling this done um, note the uh, reference to alien isolation as my inspiration and there's a little picture there of uh, a previous model that I did based off of Jack Perry's um, uh, alien isolation alien tracker we've got chemical formula for caffeine which was definitely used uh, throughout this uh, but uh, generally the textures uh, materials textures were done in substance painter uh, and if you watched me doing it it was a very basic substance painter but um, it served the purpose and so here we have this uh, front view we've got the I think that was about the last thing that I did that PC. I'm not crazy about these parts here, but we did it and it's in the scene. Uh, I've gone ahead and I'll get rid of that and start another one. I've added uh, some labels to the what could be the specimen jars. This is an interesting effect. I don't know what's going on here exactly. For some reason, I seem to be able to see a glow through a wall of the cart and I don't know how that happened um, but anyways yeah we've got some some labels there and let's see what else is uh, is different well of course the main thing uh, that you're gonna see and I'll show you a couple of other views is the uh, vegetation inside these crates uh, the concept for this is that um, I wanted it to seem like an underground lab in some kind of a desolate time where, um, you know, maybe life was threatened in some way and we were trying to preserve some or bring some back. And that was the purpose of these crates that we had some living matter of the former uh, healthy earth uh, in, in these crates. With them. Potentially that stuff could be planted at some point. I didn't do a lot of work on the books and I think that's lacking uh, in the scene. It becomes, you know, quite a, quite a process to do this much. Uh, let's have a look at an, an another picture, another render here. It's going to be mostly the same kind of stuff. Uh, funnily enough, if that is a word, when I look at this specimen stuff or chemicals whatever it doesn't it's not bleeding through there so I don't know what happened there but uh, just another view of the same stuff really I would like to pack this with books and first aid kits and and, and other pieces of glassware um, 
but I did I didn't get to that point. Um, so just another another view of the scene. Let's try another one. And that's the last one. And that's that's the main one that shows the desk area here with the microscope and the PDA and the and the lamp. And we've got one of those uh, bio crates. Uh, on the desk here along with some other pieces of equipment and then we've got one over here we've got one up here and I guess we got one right here if you look far in the back you're gonna see another alien isolation poster um, what else can I tell you about so like I say um, it's just uh, modeled in blender um, I didn't use any external models. I, I, I don't like to do that. I don't want a pre-made rock or a pre-made tree. I want to do it all myself um, if I can. And um, I used Substance Painter and I used a little bit of uh, Smudger Pro, which is a blender add-on. And I use that mostly for stuff like the dials here. And, you know, and if something was like a plastic uh, rubber, I just, it's very quick do it right in blender and i can also mix that with substance painter um and uh you know a little bit of uh compositing at the very end for some more glow on this stuff hopefully it's not too too much uh, i have a tendency to overdo it so that everything is glaring like for example if i look at this sort of potential dna i'm not sure why that's there what it's doing or how it helps the scene um, when I look at this, it looks somewhat like, uh, you know, just a, somebody's den, you know, an entertainment den. I don't know with everything glowing like a, like a, like a bar or a lounge more so sometimes than, a, a an old dusty, um, lab. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm not sure how lavish this looks, um, with the, the brick walls and the wood and stuff but this is what I came up with and um, I'm happy with the results and I think it's time to, to move on uh, there's certainly more things that I could do uh, to fix this up um, I, you know I don't I don't like the regularity of this area here I mean these are all twisted uh, these these flasks here uh, but because of that glass material it looks very regular but like I say it takes a lot of time and uh, I enjoy the modeling process most uh, I am enjoying the texturing as well um, but it gets to a point where you say okay it, it's time to move on let's let's work on something else and let's try not to necessarily do a big scene next time I think had I just focused on the desk region and just really concentrated on the right pieces of equipment with the right scale, maybe along with the monitor on the stool, that could have been okay as a little little grungy scene right there and told the story. But I wanted to expand it to, to do more. And then I found myself saying, well, what am I going to do over here that's different? And uh, what am I going to do over here? And, and, and I had to model every piece. And... Um, I, I sometimes would lose track of 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 what I'm trying to, you know, what, what story am I trying to tell? But anyways, uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. And thank you very much for anybody who has uh, persevered through the series or picked up at any point along the line. Uh, we'll be, certainly be back with more of this kind of stuff uh, in the near future. So take care, everybody, and hope to see you again soon.